Hi, I'm Curtis Brown and I'm here uh, from Texas Instruments and we are doing some smart space videos. I'm here with my friend John Urschel. John, we've been talking a lot about congruence um, and about rigid transformations, but I think in this session we're going to actually introduce the idea of similarity um, and kind of explore what that has to do with these transformations, congruence, and, and maybe other things that we can, we can talk about here. So, John, if you want to take it away, um, let's do that. All right, let's do it. In the past three sessions we've had, we've introduced the concept of a rigid transformation. We've looked at different types of rigid transformations, and we've used rigid transformations to show that different shapes are congruent. So in this session, what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a new type of transformation, something called a dilation. And just like we define congruence in terms of rigid transformations, we're gonna define similarity in terms of rigid transformations plus this new translation, this new transformation, which we'll call dilation. And in this session, just like how last time, we used rotations, translations, reflections, to show two different shapes are congruent, to show sort of same size, same shape. In this session, we're gonna show that two different shapes are similar, meaning same shape, different size, by using rigid transformations plus dilation, okay? Nice. So first of all, what's a dilation? So a dilation is some sort of transformation that's not rigid, it doesn't preserve length but what it does do is the transformation takes the length between any two points and it scales it by some positive number r, and this scaling is the same everywhere. So dilations preserve shape, but not size. So this means they're a non-rigid transformation. Okay. If the scale with which the distance between two points is decreased, let's say this factor r is less than one, then this dilation is called a contraction because the shape's getting smaller. If this R is greater than one, then it's called an expansion because it's getting bigger. And one cool property about dilations is that every dilation, and we'll suppose R is not equal to one, otherwise nothing's happening. Every dilation has a unique point in the plane that doesn't move at all. And this is called a fixed point. And so in this picture I have, I drew a triangle for you guys. And I just considered the dilation of doubling the distance. So this is a dilation with r equal to two. And we can see that this triangle, it's the exact same shape after we perform this transformation, but it's twice as big. Nice. And this is a dilation with respect to the point one one because it might not be so obvious from the picture, but what we're doing, the way in which we're sort of dilating, the point one one actually maps to itself. Okay. Okay. So those two points, they look like they're roughly similar. I remember seeing that when we talked about uh, similarity back in like seventh, eighth grade, we talked about kind of the, that they had sort of the, the same, same shape. Mm -hmm. Angles were kind of all the same, but the, the lengths were, were definitely not the same. Maybe they even had some sort of a, a proportional relationship between the lengths of the sides, right? So is that kind of what we're talking about here? Yeah, exactly. If you look at this transformed triangle, we see that the lengths are twice as long as they were before. So this tells you that for your dilation, we're dealing with an R of two. Okay. And also another thing to notice is that because it looks like it's sort of growing outward from the point one one, that one one is actually our fixed point. And so to define okay. a dilation, all you need is to choose some point that's gonna be fixed, and you just need to choose some factor R that everything is gonna be scaled by. Awesome. Okay, so awesome. let's think about similarity in terms of these rigid transformations and dilations. So let's define two shapes to be similar if you can map one to the other by some sequence of rigid transformations and dilations. So this is, again, just in the same way that rigid transformations and congruence 
were sort of tied as an algebraic version of same size, same shape. This is an algebraic version of same shape. And so to show that two shapes are similar, we're just gonna have to produce a rigid transformation and dilation that maps one to the other. And so I think we're gonna have some fun with this. I'm gonna start with an example. Let's look at this triangle ABC. To show that this triangle ABC and A prime, B prime, C prime are congruent, we just need to find the right rigid transformation and then the right dilation such that when we apply them to the triangle ABC, we get this triangle A prime, B prime, C prime out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna put C right on top of C prime. And so the first thing I notice is C prime is four units higher than C is. So I'm just gonna translate my triangle ABC four units up, but I notice that all the side lengths of triangle ABC are twice as long as the corresponding side lengths of A prime, B prime, and C prime. And so by scaling by R equals one half at the origin, we're going to get the triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime out. And you can actually see that we can do this algebraically and that we can tell that C gets mapped to C prime, A gets mapped to A prime, and B gets mapped to B prime. And so we know because we came up with a rigid transformation and then a dilation that maps triangle ABC onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, we know these two things are similar. And so nice. for the rest of this session, I think what we wanna do is take some shapes and play around with them and try to show that different shapes are similar by coming up with some rigid transformation and then a dilation that maps one to the other. Curtis, what do you think about that? I think that sounds like a really good idea. I think that sounds like a good idea. And I've actually got a couple of challenges here for you, John. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. All right. Uh, payback. All right. On the first one. So um, I know that the, in the last video, I gave you three um, sort of rigid transformation sets yeah. um, you could play with and, and map those to congruence. Now, if you can see my screen, I've got some things that um, I've got some things here ready for you that that are not just rigid transformations. So what I need, wow. to do, John, is to figure out how to manage um, the the I here mm -hmm. uh, and get it to be mapped to. I, I, we need to prove that this I and this I are similar. Okay. So first of all, we can like tell intuitively they look like they should be similar. Definitely. But now we need to really show it because math is not just about sort of intuition, but it's using your intuition to sort of show things to be true. And so All right. the thing I notice is they look like they're oriented about the same way. I don't think I need to do any reflections or rotations. Yeah. But I want to move them on top of each other. And okay. so what I'm gonna do is I wanna do a translation. Okay. And what I wanna do is I wanna translate the top left point of the polygon. Okay. This big one, the big eye. And I wanna okay. send it to the top left point of the small eye. Okay. And let's just see what that looks like. So let's take that guy and just put him right there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. All right. So now what we've got is we've got a translation. And now what I wanna do is I wanna do a dilation. Okay. And so what I'd love to do is I wanna do a dilation that let's say sends the bottom left point of my big eye to the bottom mm -hmm. left point of my small so eye. And where would you like the, the center of dilation to and be? And I want my center of dilation to be the top left corner. Okay, so let's uh, let's. So do that. I'm choosing the top left corner because that point is already where it wants to be, which means that's definitely my fixed point because I don't want it to move. For now, I want to move another point to where it should be by using okay. a dilation. And so I want to just move the bottom left point to where it should be on the bottom left of our small eye. And so I, I argue that this is actually gonna, this actually might finish the job. 
okay? By how much? How, how much are we going to dilate? What's the factor? Oh, uh, it looks like I think I want a factor of one half. Okay. But what I really want is whatever factor sends that bottom left of the big eye to the small eye. And, and I think it like, is one half. It looks like it is one half. Check that out. And I think we've mapped onto the small eye. I and think so. We did it. By doing a translation and then a dilation from mapping this big gray eye onto the small white eye, we've shown that these two shapes are similar. We've done it. We and did. The key idea was first, I used a rigid transformation to sort of line up the two eyes, make sure that one point is on top of where it should be. And then I just dilated by keeping that one point fixed and trying to put some other point where it should be. Perfect. Well done on the first one. Well All right. done on the first one, John. What's exercise number two? What All right, doing? let's try the next one. All right. Okay, so this one, I can tell that they're not quite oriented the same way. And so this one looks like it's gonna be a couple steps. This we're gonna to have to do some work on. Okay. But first, I think what I wanna do is I wanna get this T a little bit closer just to make my life a little bit easier, I would say. So I, I think I'm gonna start with a translation. I think you might be able to sort of, uh, you might be able to make do with just a, uh, just a rotation. Just a rotation, okay. You might be able to make do with just a rotation, but I really wanna start with a translation to make it sort of very okay. intuitive. I think you can make do with a rotation. I think you can also make do with a reflection, but. A lot of options here. There's a lot of options here, but I really just want to, because we're still sort of getting our bearings, I just okay. wanna translate the bottom left point of that red T uh -huh. to the top right point, or excuse me, the I top can't. left point of the big T. Let's do that one. So the bottom left point. To the top left. To the top left. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. But this, oh, is, just, totally. this is just how I want to play with it. All right. Okay. Now what I want to do is let's just reflect that little T. Okay. Across sort of this horizontal line that it's standing on top of. Yeah, okay. this horizontal line right it like that. So let's just okay. reflect it. Okay. And now we can tell that we have one point on top of where it should be. And it Want looks to like hide this one. Yeah, feel free to hide it if you can. Okay. I'll get rid of that one for you. Okay. You kind of don't have to worry about these. Perfect. And now what I want to do is now I want to do a dilation. All right. So I'd like a dilation where the top left point stays where it is. Okay. Because it's already where I want it. So let's do a dilation. We're going to dilate this polygon. Yeah. About that point. About that fixed point. And right. I think and what's this my big factor? triangle, I think it looks like it's bigger by a factor of two. All right. And so let's scale by a factor of two and see what happens. Hey, well done. See the points here? Mm -hmm. It did. It factored it, made it by a factor of two, landed hit here on all of these here. Well done, John. Well done. Thank you, sir. But uh, I think this example in particular sort of shows you that there's a lot of different ways you could have done this. I think if we were more ambitious, we definitely... Let me think. So um, this is what I did. Okay, let's, so let's see what you did. So I took T, this one, mm -hmm. and I translated by this uh, by this vector, right? So I just shifted it over. Mm -hmm. Then I reflected about this line. I just dropped this line in here, so I reflected to here. Then you see this little point right here? Yeah. That's my fixed point. Oh, wow. Up that T 
Can you see how those are mapped out? Uh -huh. So this one to here, now it goes to there. Uh -huh. and this one to there, whoops, there, goes all the way out to there. Uh -huh. So now it's twice as far. So this actually is my point of dilation. Gotcha. No, no, there's like a ton of different ways to do this. And I'm also convinced that uh, we don't need to do a translation and then a reflection. We can probably, if we're really precise, we can probably do a rotation, but that's yep. a little advanced, I think. Yeah, well, and that also assumes, so, so we have not labeled these points. Yeah. And given them an actual orientation. So there is actually a little bit further into this one that uh, we could go by labeling these points. And that's how you've, you've mapped this point over here to this point here, which kind of uh, gives us the idea that we're going to have to use that reflection. If we had mapped this point to this one, we could have used it as a rotation instead. Exactly. And so the orientation would matter and labeling these points would matter to help us um, be able to kind of establish which direction we went, but I did that on purpose to allow us a little bit more flexibility to play with. Yeah, no, of course. And I think this has been really illustrative, illustrative. And uh, I, I, think, uh, I think it's time for us to sort of wrap it up a little bit and yeah. sort of talk about some of the things that we've learned so far and sort of look ahead to see what else is coming up in this last video we have. That sounds perfect, John. Do you want to um, go ahead and share your screen and tell us uh, kind of what we have coming up next? Yeah, absolutely. So, so far we've looked at rigid transformations, congruence, dilation, similarity, and we've really thought about these geometric concepts somewhat in terms of algebra concepts where we're using coordinates and functions. And next time I think one thing that could be really cool for our last video is to really dig in to this connection between geometry and algebra. Awesome. I think that sounds, I'm really excited to hear um, kind of what you have for us in this last video that we're going to do. So John, I really appreciated being able to explore con congruence and similarity with you. Um, and I'm looking forward to our next lesson. So I'll see you next time. All right. I'll see you then.